Good afternoon. My name is David Bach. I'm an associate scientist at Brookhaven National Laboratory. Today my talk is on recent work where we are developing improved anodes for fast charging of lithium ion batteries through deliberate interface design. Currently the major barrier preventing increased adoption of electric vehicles or EVs is the significantly longer time needed to recharge the lithium ion batteries that power EVs compared to the time necessary to refuel vehicles powered by internal combustion engines. The technical challenge here is that under extreme fast charging times of 10 to 15 minutes, lithium metal will plate on the graphite anode, which significantly decreases battery cycle life through the consumption of active lithium, while also creating the possibility of internal short circuits that compromise battery safety. During the deposition of lithium via an electrocrystallization process, the free energy barrier for the formation of lithium nuclei must be overcome. However, the electrode surface electrolyte interface can present additional resistance, and an overpotential is needed to drive the reaction kinetics. The overpotential for initial nucleation is highly dependent on the electrode substrate. And as I'll describe further on the next slide, both copper and nickel metal have high overpotentials unfavorable for lithium deposition. The driving force for the overpotential during lithium nucleation is the interfacial energy difference between the substrate and lithium metal, which is dependent on the dissimilarity in crystal structure between lithium and the substrate. Copper and nickel metal crystallize in an FCC structure which is dissimilar to that of lithium, which crystallizes in BCC structure. And there's no phase solubility of copper or nickel with lithium. As a result, a large overpotential is necessary to drive lithium nucleation on these substrates. So our novel strategy to inhibit lithium plating under fast charging conditions is to deliberately modify the graphite substrate with copper or nickel nanoscale films to increase the overpotential for lithium nucleation. Some advantages of this approach are that energy density is preserved and the nanoscale films can be integrated with state-of-the-art graphite anodes. Copper and nickel films were deposited by DC magnetron sputtering deposition at Brookhaven National Laboratory. The thicknesses of the films as determined by AFM for initial experiments was 10 nanometers, which corresponds to a metal loading of approximately five micrograms per centimeter squared. Backscatter SEM images and EDS cross-section images show that the films are concentrated at the electrode surface. And for a 10 nanometer film, the decrease in energy density due to the metal coatings is only approximately 0.05%. So this approach preserves energy density compared to state-of-the-art graphite anodes. Selected area electron diffraction of the nickel and copper films was performed by sputtering TEM grids at loadings of five micrograms per centimeter squared. The diffraction pattern suggests that the metal films are initially oxidized as nickel oxide or copper oxide. We used operando X-ray absorption near-edge structure or Zane spectroscopy measurements collected on the electrodes during the initial electrochemical formation cycle to probe the changes in the oxidation state of the films with discharge and charge. The experiment clearly shows that both copper and nickel films are electrochemically reduced to copper and nickel metal during the initial lithiation process and they do not reoxidize during delithiation. It's also noted that the reduction of the metal films contributes only minimally to the irreversible capacity at between four to five microamp hours per centimeter squared. The chemistry of the solid electrolyte interface passivation layer formed on the electrodes was investigated using X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. The XPS results indicate that the SEI film is not significantly affected by the deposited copper or nickel, 
and thus is not anticipated to have a large impact on the electrochemical behavior. Also, because the spectra associated with SEI components are detected on the metal-coated electrodes, even though the analysis depth of the measurement is less than the thickness of the metal coatings, the data suggests that significant SEI formation occurs on the upper surface of the deposited metal layers. The functional capacity of the metal-coated anodes compared to pristine graphite anodes was investigated in single layer pouch cells with paired NMC 622 cathodes under extreme fast charging conditions of a 10 minute constant current, constant voltage charge protocol with 1C discharge. Cells with the nickel coated anodes in particular exhibited reduced capacity fading over 300 cycles with capacity retention close to 88% and an approximate seven to 8% improvement versus the control electrodes. Lithium plating experiments were performed to evaluate the effectiveness of the copper and nickel films at reducing lithium metal deposition compared to uncoated graphite. In these experiments, half cells with fully lithiated electrodes were subjected to negative voltage holds. Under these electrochemical conditions where the voltage of the graphite electrode is less than the thermodynamic equilibrium potential for lithium plating, lithium deposition will occur unless there is an overpotential associated with the lithium deposition reaction. What we observed was that the lithium plating capacities for the metal coated electrodes were anywhere from 30 to 40% lower than the uncoated graphite plating capacity. Additionally, the electrodes were recovered and measured using XRD to quantify the crystalline lithium plated on each electrode type. The lithium metal peak areas were normalized against the copper current collector peaks, and normalized peak areas for the metal coated electrodes were approximately 50% of the control graphite electrode at each voltage condition. SCM backscatter images were collected of the electrodes after plating at the negative 20 millivolt hold condition and are shown on this slide. Graphite particles as well as copper and nickel coatings appear brighter in the backscatter SCM images compared with plated lithium due to higher atomic number. On the uncoated graphite electrodes, interconnected dense lithium films were observed covering much of the electrode surface, while in contrast, few areas of lithium deposition are observed on the metal coated electrodes. Cross-section SEM images of the electrodes reveal that the plated lithium is contained to the upper layers of the graphite electrodes. The impact of metal film loading was also studied to optimize the potential for lithium plating suppression uh, using the metal films. In these experiments, nickel or copper metal loading of 3 micrograms per centimeter squared and 11 micrograms per centimeter squared were tested. As shown in the EDS maps here, the coatings were uniformly deposited across the top surface of the electrodes. Transmission electron microscopy was also used to characterize the nanostructure of the metal films. Notably, the sputter deposited nanoparticles that formed the three microgram per centimeter squared nickel or copper loading films have diameters of 4.7 and 5.5 nanometers respectively, and are approximately equivalent to the five nanometer film thickness determined by AFM. This indicates that these lower loading films are comprised of a single layer of nanoparticles. In contrast, the higher loading films have considerable overlap of nanoparticles with particle sizes of seven and 10 nanometers for nickel and copper films respectively with AFM measured thicknesses of approximately 20 nanometers. Again, the electrochemistry 
of the metal coated versus control anodes was tested in a single layer pouch cell configuration with paired NMC622 cathodes where the cells were charged under a 10 minute XFC condition. The cells containing graphite electrodes with the lowest metal loadings showed delivered capacities and capacity retention within error of the control group. However, for the cells containing the higher metal film loadings, improved capacity retention was achieved compared to the cells with the uncoated electrodes. The improvement in capacity retention suggests that the metal films with higher loading were able to effectively inhibit lithium deposition under the fast charging conditions and thus conserve the supply of cyclable lithium within the cell. The differences in capacity retention improvement afforded by the metal coatings of different loadings can be correlated to the variation in the nanostructures of the films shown on the previous slide. Higher metal film loadings exhibit overlap of nanoparticles and more complete coverage of the graphite surface resulting in increased suppression of lithium plating. In summary, we demonstrate that lithium metal deposition on graphite electrodes can be suppressed by modifying the electrode interface with nanoscale coatings of copper or nickel, where higher loading uh, metal films result in improved capacity retention under a 10 minute fast charge rate. The findings establish that with rational design of an electrode interface, the overpotential for lithium deposition can be modulated, which provides a new conceptual approach for reducing lithium plating on graphite anodes. And in recognition of the potentially transformative nature of this approach, we were recently awarded technology commercialization funding through the Department of Energy's Office of Technology Transitions. The new funding will be used to develop a cost-effective, scalable approach for fabricating the technology with the goal of making it suitable for adoption by a commercial partner. I'd like to acknowledge the various uh, graduate students, postdocs, and scientists who contributed to the work that I presented here, as well as the uh, co-PIs on the project, Amy Marshallock, Kenneth Takeuchi and Esther Takeuchi. I'd also like to thank our collaborators at the National Synchrotron Light Source 2, Jurgen Time and Andrew Kiss for assistance with the operando uh, Zane's measurements, uh, as well as Ming Lu and Zhao Tong at the Center for Functional Nanomaterials for their assistance with uh, XPS and the sputtering deposition. Lastly, I'd also like to thank the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy for providing uh, the funding for this project. Thank you.